We were trying to take the high ground at the Po River, and uh, uh, we ran into some heavy resistance, and the Germans brought Tiger tanks down and overran us, and our company commander at that time did not want to be responsible for wholesale slaughter, so he surrendered our group. There had to be some radios in camp someplace. Now, they were, of course, they were not supposed to be, but uh, uh, we did get uh, get some news. And and I have to tell you, Hopman Wilhelm, he was a German captain, and he was a pretty nice fellow, but I was walking down through the bar bar one time and had my head down and I didn't see him and I didn't salute him. Boy, he raked me over the coals. And then he says, no, he says, you're going to see a change in the war. He says, warmonger Roosevelt is dead. You're going to see a big change. And that's the first news that I knew Roosevelt had died. Uh, if people could know what a prisoner goes through to be put in a, a barbed wire enclosure for months at a time and, and uh, try to keep your mind, it uh, was quite a thing. I have clippings in there. They said there was 110,000 prisoners in that camp of all nationalities. We counted the days and uh, we discussed a lot what it would be like to get back home. And uh, I had, didn't have a girlfriend or I wasn't married, but there was a lot of fellows that, that were married. And uh, some of them, before they were taken prisoner, had got Dear John letters. And to, to see the, the hurt, it uh, got to you. But there's... Uh, so many people were different. Some bothered and some of them bad. We have a good friend that left with us from Webster City and after we got back home it was too much for him and he took his own life. What we had that could, got out of our Red Cross parcels. Uh, mostly that's all we had to trade. Uh, the work details that went out, we gave chocolate bars and and cigarettes and and whatever was in our Red Cross packages to get us some bread and eggs and more potatoes. The night before that we'd heard that the Americans were coming. So another guy and I, uh, a friend from Webster City, and we stayed up almost all night and we didn't hear anything. But the next morning, they started firing, and the first thing they did is take down the church steeple in the little town of Mooseburg, because uh, they used those high points for observation. And about 9.30, 10 or 10.30, was, uh, General George Patton's 14th Armored Division come in, and, and the, the 47th Tank Battalion of that division was the ones that liberated us. And uh, oh, that was quite a day. And the German guards all walked back to their to their uh, office and uh, stacked their rifles like the Americans do, and stood in formation as the Americans come in and they marched them away, all but one old man. And that afternoon, we looked up and there was this old guard, very old still walking his beat, and he had his old dog with him. And uh, somebody got his attention and went out and got him and, and brought him in, but he was faithfully walking his, uh, his beat.